Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another books weekly, my weekly video in which I discuss the books that I've either finished from a previous week or read last week or started last week. And last week was all about family calamities. There was no books weekly last week for those of you who watch my channel regularly because I was traveling. So the first book is a book that I've actually finished from week before last and that is Marisha Pessel's first novel, her uh, debut novel, Special Topics in Calamity Physics. Now this book was a reread for me. I read it for Max Max's book club, uh, The Uncovered Book Club. Um, I'll leave a link to the Goodreads group down below. And I read it when it came out, so that is in 2006. And I liked it because I gave it four stars on Goodreads, but I couldn't remember a thing. I said that, I think, in the previous video when I started the book. Um, the book is about Blue van uh, Meer, a 17-year-old girl who travels with her father, Gareth, um, somewhat mm, run-down uh, literature professor, and after the mother died in a car accident, the father moves with Blue from university to university and never staying longer than a semester or half a semester. But when the book opens, uh, Blue is about to enter her senior year and the father decides to root her and they move to a, a little uh, college town and he enrolls her in a very uh, sophisticated college there and the story takes off from there. It's a mix of a murder mystery because right in the f first page we learn that a beloved teacher, Hannah, um, has killed herself or at least has died. Uh, we also learn that Blue is entering a circle of, yeah, also very sophisticated uh, students, which, uh, and all of them, they gather around Hannah, um, they come together regularly. If you hear that, you might think Secret History, because that sounds like Donna Tartt's first novel, which also centers around a group of very sophisticated students. But let me get on to the story first. So the, the story develops, we learn about the relationship between Blue and her father Gareth, who is kind of an aloof character, womanizing, but we, we don't really get um, a good sense of him until much later in the novel. And uh, Blue, who is trying to solve the mystery of Hannah's death. And the other big part is Hannah's rela uh, Blue's relationship with that group of students. and how these students react to Hannah's death and how they re react to Blue. It's not an easy novel and I can understand, We, as I said, we read it for that book club and a lot of people DNF'd it or didn't like it. Um, I, 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 I really enjoyed the book and I think you have to read it, certainly the first part where you constantly think, oh, secret history. There are on every page at least 10 references to literature. When Blue makes a statement, she, she also ha always has a literary reference um, to back that up, which most of the time they are fake. And I personally thought it was hilarious because for me it was more a satirical approach to the yeah, the awe and the admiration um, young people have for this kind of erudite uh, footnote um, lecturers or persons, like in the secret history. So for me, it was much more a satirical um, approach to a setting like in secret history and not a rehash or a copy. And later in the book, the book develops much more into a murder mystery. We learn about a secret um, society that is, yeah, a political, has a political agenda, activist, a group of activists. The book is very slow in the beginning, certainly the first 200, 250 pages. And it's a long book. It's over 400 or 450 pages. And it's certainly not suitable or to be liked by everyone. I can understand that. But if you 
approach it with an yeah with a more uh, uh, this is a satire attitude and just go along for the ride and actually read until the end I, I think you might enjoy it as much as I did. I, at least I, yeah, I liked it. I gave it four stars again on Goodreads and I, I, I thought it was really funny and hilarious and um, a good mix of, of a satirical novel, murder mystery, um, family calamities. So yeah, I liked it, but I can understand that it's not for everyone. If you have read it, please let me know in the comments what you thought of it, because I'm very interested to hear other opinions. And on to the second book I've read, and that was Kate Atkinson, Behind the Scenes at the Museum. That's also a first novel. It was Atkinson's debut novel, came out more than 20 years ago, 1995. Um, I've talked about Kate Atkinson before on this channel, She's an English uh, contemporary writer and probably most famous, at least in, in the booktube communi uh, community, for her book Life After Life. And also for, for crime lovers, um, she writes crime fiction. Um, Jackson Brody is her main character in, in those uh, books. And behind at the scenes of the museum um, I, I heard about that book I ha had it on my radar for quite some time because I loved life after life um, and that's one of the things that I really love about booktube because I watched uh, another booktuber's uh, book haul Sue from Sue's Book Nook, Nook which is a fantastic channel I really love her uh, links of course down below and she hauled that book and I thought now I'm gonna read it so I, I went and get got the book from the secondhand bookstore and read it I think in two sittings. It's a very quirky novel. Main character Ruby Lennox um, tells us her the tale of her life from the moment of conception. So that's that's already a quite a quirky start and there are flashbacks where we learn more about the, the family history, especially the women of the family in New York in a working class uh, community and I thought that the book was really very yeah funny and quirky and interesting um, well written um, if you read it because I don't want to spoil it but if you read it um, let me know what you thought of the ending because I thought the twist at the end didn't really um, make sense with the beginning of the book uh, because there is um, yeah there, there is amnesia plays a role that Ruby Lennox uh, has forgotten or has suppressed a very important part of her own um, history and I thought that was okay from the moment that the incident happens which suppressed the memory but didn't make sense before the incident. So from the moment of conception until the incident, I thought she would have remembered that when recounting the story. But but anyway, that might be just me. So if you read it, let me know whether you had the same problem. But I really loved the book and I can certainly recommend it. Next book is also a first novel. That seems to be the theme here, besides family calamities, that I read only first novels. Um, and that is Emma Flint, Little Deaths. The book just came out in January uh, of this year. Uh, Emma Flint is, uh, lives in London and she is obviously interested in true crime because Little Deaths is based loosely uh, on uh, a true crime. It's the story of, um, in 1965, of a young mother with two children living alone, separate, separated from her husband in Queens, New York, in a working class community, rather tight-knit, so neighbors know what you are doing. Um, she Mother tries to make the ends meet, she works in a cocktail bar, she has various relationship uh, ships with men, her name is Ruth, by the way, <laughs> maybe I should mention that. Um, and. The book opens when at one morning Ruth wakes up, um, goes upstairs to the room of her two little children, a boy and a girl, and they are gone. So the story of the book, based on a true 
crime where two children went missing is what, uh, about what happens afterwards about the police investigation, how the police treats uh, Ruth because she doesn't fit the um, yeah the view uh, 1965 had on women. She, like I said, uh, she's a single mom and she, she works in a cocktail bar. She has um, various relationships with men. So the police investigation uh, about the missing children and we learned what happened to the children starts to focus on the mother. The other part of the book is from the point of view of a reporter, Peter, who is not very successful so far for a local newspaper and more or less by chance he starts, he gets the story of the two miss missing children and starts to investigate and becomes obsessed with Ruth and the story of the missing children. We learn at the end what really happened to the children, <clears throat> so that that is part of the of the book that we learn who what happened, who did what. Um, and I have to say I was rather disappointed with the book. I only gave it uh, two stars. Um, I thought there was not enough suspense for a suspense crime novel about missing children. I didn't really like the switch of point of view from Ruth to the journalist Peter. Um, and I, yeah, after 10 pages, I thought, well, that's what happened. He's the culprit or she's the culprit. I'm not going to tell you, but it, it the suspense was gone for me once uh, very early on. I think you can figure out what hap what is go going to happen. So, so that disappointed me. And the other thing that I didn't enjoy was it, it's a 1965 setting and a lot of people on Goodreads said that they were so uh, engrossed in, in the setting and the way that Emma Flint portrayed uh, the 1960s. And that was strange for me because I didn't feel that. On the contrary, I had to remind myself constantly that this is the life of women in 1965 Queens, New York, in a small working class community. If I hadn't read that before, I wouldn't have felt that the novel is not set now, but in the past. But still, I mean, it's a, it's a first novel and I will certainly uh, have a look uh, at what Emma Flint writes next. So it, it's not it's not a bad, bad book, but given the expectations that I had, and it also had a lot of buzz, still has a lot of buzz on Booktube, I was disappointed in it as a crime book. If you read it, like I said before with the other books, let me know what you thought of it. And then very quickly to the last book, the book that I've just started, and that is uh, Louise Gilder, The Age of Entanglement. If you're watching this channel um, uh, for longer, you might have, you might remember the book because I, I hauled it and I started it and then it got lost because it was in the suitcase that got stolen uh, in in uh, end of last year. So I rebought it and I just started it um, this weekend. It's just what it says. It's about quantum mechanics. That's an, a subject that I'm really fascinated by and I'm, I'm, I'm reading about it and I try to read more this year. It's one of those topics, subjects that I want to read more this year and this gives an overview of uh, the main players and um, how quantum mechanics was developed. It's also a first book. So there we go with the theme. There are no family calamities in this one because this is non-fiction, but I'm really looking forward uh, to this and I'm not going to leave it in a suitcase again um, so that it doesn't get lost. So this was it for this week's Books Weekly. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, leave a comment um, on the books or on any other subject if you want to. And yes, I know I still have to do the A's to your Q's and announce the winner of the giveaway. Um, but there were so many questions and I'm traveling a lot at the moment, so you will have to have a little patience. Um, I hope to get to the 
to this video at the end of the month or maybe beginning of February. Anyway, have a good weekend and I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.